Okay, but size blended learning, first of all. Okay, for those who are not familiar with WebEx, okay, when you join in this uh, webinar, you are automatically been unmute and you didn't have uh, your video is been switched off. So if you want to ask me something, you may turn on your um, turn on uh, or mute yourself and you may ask me directly uh, and if you want to show your face you may share your uh, camera okay switch on the camera so if not uh, if you want to have a chat with us at the end of your i mean at the bottom of your screen there on right side you will see participants and a little bit button chat there you may click the chat button and type your message and click enter i will try to read your questions in the chat box there at the end of the session or during the session okay uh, All right, so basically for this webinar, we have like seven points or seven topics we will discuss. Maybe you have an idea, you may share your idea as well. So first of all, we will introduce about uh, ELIP and the BL criteria, and then how we want to get started with ELIP. And online learning synchronous and asynchronous, uh, what are the different between both of the online mode and how to add resources using ELIP tools or using external tools, adding activities also by using ELIP tools or external tools, adding assessment, what type of ELIP tools that we can use and what type of external tools that we can use. And I will show you several of online teaching resources and guidelines that have been provided uh, by come and last but not least maybe we will try um, a hands-on activity how to add uh, resources activities or assessment in your ELIP okay for blended learning indicator uh, when you go or, or you visit to ELIP you will see uh, your course there at the at the at the right, your right hand side at the top there you will have that three stars there okay what does it mean is it's actually a measure okay the quality of your bl okay have uh, three stars okay i will show you one star two star and three stars what does it mean so for one star it means that you have achieved the minimum of criteria for blended learning one star so it does not mean that you need to have three stars to achieve blended learning one star is sufficient so one star means that okay minimum one participation for each activity and submissions for each assessment okay one participation so at least you have um, one of your students participate for each activity activities mean at least you have three activities in your course okay so it does if you have two activities it it's still not yet achieved blended learning okay and at least you have two assessments so it means that uh, make sure that you have at least one participate one participation for each activity on the activities three activities and three submissions here three submissions for each assessment your assessment at least you have two two assessment okay so for example you have 100 of students okay um, at least three of them okay three of your students submit your assessment your two assessments not one but both of the assessment two but 
how about if you teaching on uh, for repeat uh, classes okay repeat course for repeat course maybe you will not have 100 of students you might have less than three students okay as you can see here the minimum at least you have three submission at least you have three students submit for your assessments but right now you have less than three students so it means that all of you uh, for example you have choose only two students in your class it means that you need uh, well, it's not you uh, i mean the students both or both of the students need to submit the assessment okay not one but both of them so for two stars what does it mean at least 30 percent of the total enrolled students in your uh, course in elip has uh, participate in your activities and uh, submit at least two assessments in your elip okay 30 percent okay if 50 students been registered at least you have uh, 15 students uh, participate in the activities and 15 students have submit the assessment two assessments if you have 100 of students at least you have 30 students to get uh, participate in the three activities and 30 students have submit two assessments okay i hope that's clear all right yes uh, for these um, slides i will share to all of our faculty members okay for reference so again um, for three stars for three stars it means that at least 50 percent or half of your students been um, active okay by participate in three activities your three activities provided in elip and have submitted two assessment at least two assessments in your elip okay 50 percent only 50 percent if if you have 50 total uh, students at least you need to have uh, 25 students if you have 100 of students 50 students must um, participate or active in the activities and submit their assessment okay So the BL criteria again, okay, at least for course info here, okay, when you visit your ELIP, okay, at the top there, at least you provide a course outline or course plan, okay, at least one, and then resources there. So let me show you the pointer here, okay. Seven resources here, okay. That's why uh, at your blended learning status there, 732, it means that the minimum requirement in your uh, ELIP, I mean, as, as uh, to achieve the blended learning status, at least you have seven of resources, three activities and two ass assessments provided in ELIP. Okay, seven resources here. Okay, seven resources, it means that, uh, for example, your slides, your notes, uh, like PDF form or Microsoft Word or Microsoft uh, or slideshow here. Okay, that, that can account as uh, uh, resources. So activities, okay, so activities here, at least you have three as been mentioned earlier okay for activities example is like forum journal choice okay workshops etc but usually i will uh, mention or i'll just give example a really simple uh, example you can use a forum or discussion tools in elip okay and for assessment uh, at least you have two assessment in your uh, uh, elip or in your course at least uh, with minimum if you want to uh, get a blended learning status at least in your assessment three submission okay, three students have been submit in your assessment okay for assessment you may use assignment turnitin assignment 
tools and quiz okay i will show you how we want to create all of these tools using ellip later okay that's that's all for the introduction of ellip and bl criteria if you didn't get the clear idea how how uh, BL status is been achieved, uh, you may ask or you may stop me and you may ask me uh, right now or maybe later. Or maybe you can type it in your in the chat box. Okay, and then we will continue for getting started with Elite. Okay, when you go for, uh, when you visit the Elite, okay, uh, elip.unimas.my, okay, this is the latest one. So, welcome to semester 1, 20, 20, 20, 21. Okay. And if you see uh, at your navigation there, at the bottom there, there's an ELIP guide for course instructor. If you want to have more information on how to add on and how to use ELIP tools, uh, you may click there because it's been provided in the ELIP web page. Uh, for lecturers, how we want to get started using this ELIP. Okay, or um, this is a QR code. Okay, if you may, maybe you want to scan the QR code here uh, just to get directly to the link for the ELIP guide for instructors web page. Okay, it's okay. After this, I will show you where we can click this link, show you the ELIP. Okay, if you click the ELIP guide for course instructor, this is um, the example what what are inside in this uh, web page. Okay, so usually it's just um, there's a lot of examples and how to uh, to add on. Okay, if you can see here, there's a file that add course resources and content. There's extra. It's not an extra. There's um. There's a note or reference that you, you may refer on how to add on the resources or, or how to add on the assessment or activities in your ELIP. So external tools there, there's also um, information using Mentimeter, Cap or Padlet or how to add YouTube videos. Um, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot of um, examples there. You may want to check it out. And for live class and video streaming, okay, if you're really um, going for it for synchronous session, which is live session, you may want to see how uh, how you want to use Zoom or how you want to use Google Hangouts. Okay. So online learning right now, okay, we will continue again the difference between the synchronous and asynchronous mode. Okay. Um, there's also uh, online teaching tips which have been provided in the ELIP. Okay. Uh, option one is mainly synchronous or real time okay, with a high bandwidth access. Okay. Option one is, is suggested if uh, you need to make sure that your students okay, have a really high bandwidth access in order for you to conduct your class in a real time or in synchronous uh, mode. Oh, option two, if you found out uh, some of the students didn't have um, a really good internet connection or low bandwidth access, it is recommended to have your class in asynchronous mode. Asynchronous mode, it means that it's not a live session. You may use your recorded version, okay, your lecture which has been recorded and you may upload it in your uh, ELIP. Okay, and then the students uh, that that doesn't have a um, really good connections. Okay, um, it's not a burden for them to have um, to have a. I mean, if you have a live session at that time during that time, it's not a burden for them need to join your class at that time. At least he or she may refer your lecture notes or your lecture video uh, when when time when it's time. Um, I mean using their own uh, self self pace I mean the available time they might want to go through it 
okay as been mentioned earlier the synchronous it's real time again make sure your all of your students it not it is not some okay all of your students we don't want to differentiate our students uh, who is low who has a low bandwidth or really high bandwidth okay but I'm not so sure if your students some of your students might uh, might want to have a live session maybe you might want to use it I'm not uh, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to do in real time but if you have a students that need to have live se live session because maybe they will they are comfortable to have one-to-one -one discussion, okay, rather than to just see your um, your recorded version because it it is hard to ask at that time. Okay, maybe you may conduct live session, okay, okay, you may conduct live session, but it's not a main thing you need to do because you know that some of the students doesn't have a, a good internet connection, so maybe you need to have both of it synchronous and asynchronous okay real time session with the recorded version okay so live teaching tools you may use zoom okay skype webex or microsoft teams most of us using zoom okay and some of us using webex as well not so sure about the microsoft teams as long um uh, for me it's my my opinion as long you are comfortable with the tools either you use zoom webex or microsoft teams it's up to you because uh, you're the one who in charge of your course okay but make sure you need to inform your students earlier on which platform you will use for your course or for your class okay so Maybe you want to use a YouTube Live or Facebook Live, but um, I guess it's most of us are using Zoom or Webex. Okay. At the end of it, remember to record your session. Okay. If you use Zoom and Webex, uh, currently I'm using Webex for this uh, webinar. Okay. And you need to record your session. Okay. First of all, it's just uh, for your uh, record purposes. And second thing is maybe you want to save it and upload it or share your link. Okay, maybe upload it in Elip. So because I've been uh, some of my students last uh, last semester. Okay, they prefer to have a um, live session with the recorded version. So it's easy for them to refer back. Okay, sometimes they didn't catch up what they have learned during that time. So they want to revise again by uh, review your record session. Okay, so it is good for them to uh, revise again what they have learned uh, your class uh, in your class later. Okay, record session. Okay, uh, there's one example here. Okay, it's a screencast o -matic. Okay, I will show you later after this. Okay, this is the example of in your ELIP example for live session. If you are prefer in doing live session class, okay, synchronous mode, okay. Here you will say that, okay, for this week or maybe this unit one, what type of um, unit one will be uh, cover. So this one, the example is pengenalan kepada linguistic komunikasi. So you need to mention what is the learning content there? Okay, I show you again the pointer option. Okay, learning content. So it it makes the students really clear. Okay, this is the learning content. Um, we may click on it. Okay, okay. What is communication? Uh, this one is ethos, pathos, and logos here. It is a link. Okay, we will uh have a hands-on activities how to add link in your ellipse. Okay, and then live class session. Okay, live class sessions. Uh, make sure that you have a clear instruction. Either you want to have a live class session or you want to have a recorded version. For this one, it, it mentioned here clearly live class sessions. Live class at 10 March 2020 at 9 a.m. 
So it's just remind the student when you want to start your class. Okay, it's a live class. It's not recorded or what whatsoever. It's a live class sessions on um, 10 March at 9 a.m. Okay, so here again, okay, the content is the resources. Okay, live class session and learning activities here. Okay, learning activities here. You need um, it's suggested. Okay, it is suggested to make it clear activity one. So it means that this 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 is the activity which student need to participate. Okay, if you mention that tonton and tulis are just the description, it doesn't seem it's not really clear for the students. The, do they need to participate or do they need to respond? So if you put it as activity, so it means that it is uh, the students need to respond for in that activity. Okay. All right. For the second mode, which is asynchronous online teaching mode, this is uh, suggested for low bandwidth access. Okay. For low bandwidth access, um, it's not occur in real time. Okay. And been mentioned earlier, it, it is recommended when you realize that not all students have strong internet connections. Okay, we don't want to put the, the pressure on the students. Okay, so at least they have, um, they know when is the suitable time for them to access all of our learning content. Okay, and it is done on students on time and at their own space. Okay, you need. Uh, maybe we need to realize that sometimes most of the students, um, maybe most of students have only one laptop, okay? So that one laptop need to be shared among their siblings. So some of their siblings need to use uh, at this specific time and maybe their sister or brother need to use the laptop during a specific time. So... It's not because of high or low bandwidth access. Sometimes it is, the, I mean, I mean the accessibility of students to use the laptop. Okay, it, it is sometimes they are sharing, so you need to consider that as well. So it is recommended to use asynchronous online teaching mode. But if you're not um, really comfortable to use fully asynch asynchronous online teaching mode, you may add on your live session, maybe. In one week, you want to uh, do at least one session, live sessions. You may want to ask the students, uh, is there any um, any questions or any any that any topic that you are not clear about? You may discuss uh, during our live session and you need to mention when you will conduct your live session. So it doesn't mean that you need to do only asynchronous fully uh, asynchronous online mode or only synchronous online mode you may use both of them okay asynchronous and uh, synchronous okay so it, it it depends on you which one you are comfortable and which one uh, the students are prefer okay all right for recording tools as we mentioned about asynchronous mode okay so we might to have a uh, um, recording tools okay the familiar one okay the usually the common thing that have been used uh, from last semester okay powerpoint recording okay i will show you how you want to use your powerpoint as your recording tools it is easy and simple okay and for online audio recording okay online audio recording sometimes you have uh, like materials okay maybe your pdf version okay it's not a powerpoint form it's pdf but maybe you may want to upload your pdf and you want to upload your um your audio recording you you can use your audio recording online voice recorder it is free it is online you can save your uh mp3 if i'm not mistaken it is in mp3 format okay uh, you may you may save it and you can upload it in uh, elip okay whiteboard teaching okay 
uh, whiteboard teaching, you can scribble uh, or write on something like in this Webex. Okay, in this Webex, we have, uh, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, we have a whiteboard as well, whiteboard tools. You might want to use it uh, to explain or in your, uh, especially in calculations. Okay, screen recording. Okay. Sc the application this is screencast or matic is one of uh, free online uh, version but free online version only for 15 minutes okay the screen recording just have uh, 50 the maximum is 15 minutes only for free version if you want to have more than 15 minutes you need to pay some of the amounts okay but uh, if you want to still use a, a free version, it's 15 minutes. You may, if your class needs to have like 30, 30 minutes, okay? If you have class 30 minutes, yes? Dr. Hafizah. Yes. Uh, saya bertanya, mm -hmm. just in case, like, can we do like Webex ataupun Zoom mm -hmm. and then we record ourselves? Boleh. Meeting sama Boleh. seorang, kan? Boleh. So, share yeah. screen, kan? That's that is easy. Longer, yeah, longer, yeah. That is suggested uh, when I play around last time. When I play around uh, this, because when you use these tools, it is very, uh, I mean, new to us. So mm. of course, I like, need to learn. Okay, which which button need to click? Which button? So it's kind of miserable, right? So uh, it is uh, that that is the best suggestion from Dr. Nodiana. Okay, if you are really familiar with this uh, Zoom or Webex or maybe Microsoft Teams, okay, uh, I don't, I don't think I can show the example here because right now I'm using Webex with you. Nanti lain pula jadi kita tutup pula. So, uh, maybe you may start, you start your own meeting and then you record your own meeting. Okay, My, your Webex and your Zoom, you have um, a share tools. Okay. From that, you can, uh, from share tools, just click on it and bolehlah ajar sorang-sorang, uh, record, recording ajar sorang-sorang and then save it. Okay, that's the easy way. Sangat simple. Okay. So, the file size, uh, make sure if you want to upload your elip, because right now, okay, the whole Unimas are using fully online. So, you, it is a um, normal thing. If everyone is using the ELIP full online in ELIP, uh, it will have uh, something macam ELIP akan jadi berat. So if it's too heavy, it might um, ganggu sikit in our in our teaching online uh, online teaching mode here. So make sure your file size is not too large because if it's too large, when the students try to open Okay, to open your document there, okay, it might take a longer buffering, okay, it's buffering and buffering, buffering, so it's, it's not a good thing if your students keep buffering here and there, and at the end, they couldn't access your uh, lecture notes or your lecture video, okay, so my suggestion is if you have a really large, like, maybe about almost one hour, okay, sometimes we couldn't, we couldn't, um, we try to limit ourselves not to have a really long version of lecture, but if you have a really long lecture, you might want to save your video recording in your OneDrive and then link your recording there from OneDrive to your ELIP. Okay. So, okay. We go for the next one. Okay. So this is like the example of uh, asynchronous mode. Okay, again, you need to describe what is your unit one. So at least the students know. Okay, unit one, we will learn about this. Okay, okay, and then here. Okay. Okay, I I uh, can see a chat from Dr. Nodiana. Okay, Dr. Nodiana suggests that to create a course okay at gmail account with one share folder for all students okay so that they can access to the following recorded webex uh, with or without students 
Okay, number two, narrated uh, PPT, narrated slideshow, videos, and plain PPT, smaller size. Okay, ending to uh, ellipse. Okay, this is one way not to directly, not to upload all of your learning materials to ellipse. Okay, this is one way to make sure, to ensure that your ellipse is not heavy load. Okay. So here, okay, again, um, for your asynchronous, you have a, this one is, as you can see, if you have a really small size of PPT, it's okay. It doesn't, I'm, I'm not saying that you couldn't, you couldn't uh, upload your materials in your ellipse. Okay, if you think it is too heavy, so it is suggested to link your materials from OneDrive, okay. But if it's just a small size, like PDF is like three, two pages, five pages, it's not too heavy, you may upload it directly. Okay, something like these notes. Okay, so again, you need, this is the resources. Okay, activity again, you need to describe, this is the activity, you need to participate in the activity. Okay, and the quiz like, uh, like a simple assessment. Okay. You can. Okay, this is the example. Okay, um, again for asynchronous mode. Okay, it's not a live session. Maybe you want to say that um, uh, this is for if you have, um, if you want to have both uh, online mode, teaching mode, which is live session or asynchronous session. Okay, maybe the students quite confused when is the time we have a live session when is the time we have only a recorded version okay maybe you want to um, inform the student okay this week there will be no online face-to-face -face lecture okay so all the lecture materials and activities will be uploaded when so the students uh, will take note okay this is the time the lecture will give the lecture materials and the activities okay and the activities you might want to mention again because some of students ala tak pula tengok je okay you need to mention again what do they need to do okay so since there's no live session because if you have live, se live session you may ask them to scan the QR code okay uh, during that time but for recorded version you need to take account the uh, participation in the activities so you need to mention again the students since it is not live your attendance will be recorded based on your involvement in the activities so it's like giving the students hint okay you need to uh, respond in the activity at least give a respond at least to have give opinions okay and you need to mention again just to make clear instructions okay when on what time um, because you know our students loves to do a last minute thing you need to have a deadline on there so because maybe uh, later it will be a problem the students will say oh i have i have um uh, actually give response uh, in the ELIP, okay, in the activities in the ELIP. But when you saw, uh, when you double check again in your activity, oh, it's been, uh, supposedly you need to give uh, a, a response in first week, but then he just give your response like on the third week. It's not account, it's not been account as attending the lecture on the first week, okay? So make a clear instructions, okay? Um, I've put here, please click on the image below to access the narrated PowerPoint slide. Okay, we will, um, I will show you on how using the, uh, just the image there, okay, click the image, then you can uh, directly go for, uh, directly link, this link will go directly for your lecture notes. Okay, so activity one, activity two, okay, if they have any question, Q&A, okay? And the lecture notes. Okay, uh, you might want to add on um, assessment if you want to have an assessment uh, there, but it doesn't mean that every week you need to have assessment. Okay, uh, because uh, it depends on your course plan. 
it's not every week you have um, assessment. Okay, double check with your course band when you want to have your uh, assessment, like quiz or assignment or project. Okay, so again, please record your students' attendance. Okay, how to record your student attendance? Okay, you need my class and then generate QR code attendance. Okay, if you're not familiar again how to record your attendance, uh, this is the website academia2.unimas.my slash my class. Okay, once you uh, click on the link, you will be directed to my class webpage. Okay, so QR class attendance will be at the bottom of it. QR class attendance there. Uh, click on it. Uh, you will generate uh, uh, the class attendance. Okay, the student might want to scan the QR code, or you, if for live session. But if it's not live session, you may want to key in. It's, it it is tedious. You need to key in one by one manually uh, for for record as a attendance record. Okay, if it's uh, being staying setting here. Okay, if it's asynchronous, you need to manually key in the um, uh, student's metric number. If I'm not mistaken, yes, metric number uh, to to record as a record attendance in the my class system. Okay, so how we want to add resources. Okay, using ellipse tools or external tools here. Okay, so these are the four. I'm I'm not stating or I'm not um, giving you all of the resources, uh, which is which are available in ellipse. I will give you few examples that are commonly being used in um, ellipse. Okay, first of all, file label page or url okay uh, i will okay again well, i will show you one by one how to add in uh, at last session on last session hands on activities how to how to add on these tools in your ellipse okay and again uh, we have discussed about this adding resources if you if you have okay make sure your uh, this link, how to embed a video link, this is just a way, one way to avoid heavy load in your ellipse. Okay, that's why there's a link there. Okay, it's been uh, suggested by um, Dr. Nordiana as well. Okay. If you, um, okay, I will show you if you have uh, upload your materials in your OneDrive, okay, and on your OneDrive there, yeah, there's a tree. Let me show you. There's a three button there. Click on it and just click the copy link. So if this copy link, okay, you just the share materials is just for combustion reaction. Okay, if you put a file, okay, actually this file, okay, all of these materials is under lecture notes. Okay, uh, maybe I'll show you later. Lecture notes here. If you click lecture notes, okay. Uh, instead of one by one of this um, slideshow, okay, you will share the student the whole of this lecture materials. Okay, it's uh, if you want to do that, it's easy as well. But maybe some of you didn't want to share all of your lecture notes at once, okay, because you're planning. Okay, this is the for whole week. Okay, from week 1 until week 14 there. Okay. Uh, you don't want to share all of your lecture materials which include for the whole week because you because sometimes when the students have read or just, oh, okay, I have these materials, uh, I, I don't have to attend the class for next week because I already have the, uh, all the materials. So in order to avoid that, some of us would like to upload one by one, one by one for like this week one, this, this, first, uh, this first week, maybe you want to upload this first combustion reaction. And for the second week, and then you want to have the material balance for the second lecture notes and third lecture notes. 
and fault ledger you know, and so on okay so it depends on you on how you want to design your um, your class do you want to upload all the materials at once or you want to upload one by one okay it's okay I will show you later on how to share or embed your uh, materials in Elip. okay all right uh, for copy link okay here label and label and URL okay this is this is a few examples of um, external uh, it's not external to external tools which can be embed into the um, ellip okay to add activities okay what kind of ellip tools can we use or external tools uh, as activities for the students okay chat or feedback and forum okay i will show you uh, some examples what i have done last semester okay so we move on again okay for external tools we have wooklet called padlet mentimeter and kahoot okay kahoot is is good if you have a live session um, live session a live class a live live online it's not for if it's asynchronous because this Kahoot, if you're not familiar for this Kahoot tools, it's just like a quiz, but the quiz needs to be participate at that time, during that time. Okay. For Mentimeter is a good as well um, as uh, activities. Uh, Padlet, usually we use a Padlet. It is easy. Okay. And... It's not complicated at all. Okay, we'll show you after this. Okay, how to link your external tools to your course page. Okay, option one again. Uh, let me put a pointer. Okay, option one. Uh, you can use URL tools in Elip. Okay, we'll show you on how you how to use this tools uh, and link it in Elip. Okay, and option two, okay, embed it on the main course page using label or embed within a page. Okay, maybe you're kind of um, not familiar with this label. Okay, I will show you the simple way on how to embed like Padlet in your uh, Elite page. Alright, so this one, the example to add Padlet. This one is a Padlet. Okay, how to embed it in Elip? Okay, um, maybe we need to have a hands-on activity after this. Okay, we'll just continue. I will show you how to embed Padlet in your um, in your Elip. Okay, adding assessments. Okay, Elip tools and external tools. What are the suitable tools for as adding the assessments? For in Elip tools, okay, the assignment here is a really famous, commonly been used uh, to us, okay. Assignment, quiz, and Turnitin assignment, okay. What is the difference between assignment and Turnitin? So assignments, the student just put the assignment any. Um, Microsoft Word or just uh, put the assignment in terms of PDF or Microsoft Word or any, any else, anything else, uh, any format they can put in. But for turn it in, okay, it is okay. It is one way if you want to check whether your um, students' project or students' assignments been plagiarized. Are they plagiarized? Uh, the the assignments being plagiarized. There's a percentage of of uh, plagiarism, okay? Because as you know that this is a fully online, okay. Students are uh, tend to copy paste uh, the answer in the internet. All the answer are provided in internet or in the journals. So you might want to double check it. Are the project or are the assignments are really been 
been write up by the students or just been copy pasted. So this is one way or one tool that can detect the plagiarism, the percentage of plagiarism. Usually the percentage, it depends on you. Usually it's below 25%. It's been it's been recommended below twenty five percent is acceptable, um, but if you want to going down for like twenty percent, it's it's okay. It's up to you how much percentage is being acceptable. Okay, for external tools here. Okay, again Padlet, uh, as you can uh, see previously, Padlet's been used as activities. Padlet also can use by uh, Padlet also can use by using as, as, as assessments. Okay, that is why I've been mentioned earlier. You need to put um, description there. Either this is activity or assessment. Okay, if it's activity, you need to put activity. Click this link. Okay, to okay to give suggestions. Okay. Or any opinions on this? Uh, what what we have learned uh, during this week? If it's some, if it's assessment, okay, you need to put it. This is a submit your assessment um, by clicking this link. Okay, so link is this padlet. Okay, there's a chat there from Dr. Nodiana. Okay, for those intending to do take home exam or online sing exams. Kindly avoid Turnitin as a requirement as these two modes are short time length. Okay. Whereby the Turnitin is not suitable. Okay. Turnitin license are also limited, therefore the submission may be stuck in traffic. Okay, double check that again. Okay. Let's okay, continue again for online teaching resources. Okay. Here there's a compendium of online teaching resources. We have a lot of um, resources is not from just Unimas. Outside Unimas from the other university as well, they have a lot of um, reference you want to refer to, especially on how to conduct your uh, class in online mode. Okay, they are, they have a like seminar or sometimes sharing session you want to um, you want to see. Okay. Okay, from this compendium, if you, it's easier, it's not, there's, actually in this comp, compendium, there's about 200, more than 200 lists. Yeah, the list is keep going and going because uh, we always keep it update. Okay, there's a lot of uh, lists there. So, it is tedious to, to read one by one, one by one. So, it's easy, just um, click or find or control F okay just click on control F there and just type in what type of uh, what a type of what are the things that you want to uh, search like if you want to see how to use Webex just uh, just type on Webex and search and search for it or click enter to search any uh, resources that are related with Webex Okay, so all right. So online learning, uh, online teaching guideline also available in in it. Okay, uh, we'll show you which where you where you want to find it in ellipse page. Okay, so if you have any questions right now, uh, maybe you want to directly ask me. Okay. Okay. Or yeah, for uh, I'm reading a chat here in chat box. Calculations, juga tentin tidak dapat trace. Yeah. It's uh, for if you have a lot of calculations. That's um, usually in engineering we have a lot of calculations. Tentin cannot trace it because it's just trace the words. Okay. It is tentin is better. It's good to use if you have a full like an essay uh, assignment or essay type essay type. Okay, maybe we want to go for um, how reliable is Cinemas Webex for approximate 
150 students have been tested. Okay, if I'm on, I've, I'm not mistaken, uh, Webex have conducted more than 100 plus. Okay, more than 100. Yes, it's been conducted, but I will double check again. Either we can have more uh, around 150 uh, participants in Webex. Okay. Because um, sometimes it limit. If I'm not mistaken, Webex there there are no limitation on Webex, but I will double check it again. I will and will give update to all of the uh, our faculty members. Okay. So maybe if there's um, if you have more any questions, you might want to ask or. We can move to hands-on practice. Okay. Okay. Oh, you okay? Unimas Webex license is up to thousand packs. Hopefully, the session will be smooth. Yeah, need to double check it. It's about sumo guno online. Takut ada yang terskat skat. So we'll double check it again. So let's, I will share you screen again. Okay. Uh, all right. Sekarang, we'll go for hands-on activity. Okay. Sekejap ni. Okay. Okay, we go for the ellip. Okay. Okay. If you go to your ellip, okay, ellip.unimas.my here, it's already, it's been updated here. Semester 1, 2020-2021 for Unimas undergraduate students. Okay. Under your navigation here, okay, if you want to go for a um, quick guide for instructor, there you go, ELIP guide for course instructor, as we mentioned earlier. Okay, click on it. Okay, so there's a lot of um, several examples. Okay, online, Unimas online teaching guide. There's a lot of Unimas teaching online, uh, just one of it, the previous one. Okay, so this one, okay, you have a blended learning criteria. Okay. This is the compendium being mentioned earlier. You click on it, okay, you might want to click on it or you can download it or open a new window. Okay, if you open a new window, okay. So this is the compendium which I mentioned before. If you want to, okay. Uh, this is okay. How to set up Webex account like a pro? You may click on this link and you you can view the video. Okay, it is easy. Okay, just click on it and then you will get the resources and you can view all of this um, resources so elip guide for beginners okay getting started from zero okay if you are want to try it on again okay click the video okay, for example i click getting started from zero here okay uh there's a oops uh sorry yeah <laughs> skip that okay so getting started from zero okay so you might want to um, to use this, okay? Just to double check it again. Have you done it correctly or not? Okay, so this is one example. So there you go. A lot of, there's a lot of a video there. Okay. All right, so it's really good for us because we start again for uh, online, full online, we need to um, need to know how to 
uh, to use these online tools okay so there's a lot of reference here so okay this is the folk compendium okay just close it so it's actually under the elip guide for course instructor which already available in your elip okay here okay you might want to scroll down again what uh, what are the reference you want to use? Okay, COVID-19 response online teaching tips. Okay, this is the example I gave to you earlier. Okay, option one, option two. And here again, the checklist for online teaching before, during, after. Okay, you might want to have a take a look on it. Okay. Elip guide to spice up your courses. Okay. What are the things? Okay, there's a lot and if I want to show one by one, maybe till tomorrow it's not finished yet. So just just um, check out for ELIP guide for course instructor in your ELIP. Okay, so for the resources, all the resources are here. So no worries. Okay, just you need you just need to know that the resources are already provided in ELIP there here. Okay, let's see uh, for your course here. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, maybe you need to double check again. Your new courses for semester one, session 2020 and 2021 already available in your ELIP. Okay, already available in your ELIP. For example, here, okay, for two, okay, it's my course. Okay, for example, just an example, yeah. Okay, 4253 Occupational Safety and Health. So it's Okay, it's really, it's zero, nothing's here. So because it's new, okay, let's, um, maybe we want to uh, try it one by one here. Okay, occupational safety and health. What, what you want to do here, first of all, um, you need to have like really simple information about this course, okay? How to add on, how to edit it. Okay, first of all, Turn editing on here. Okay. Okay. After you have turned editing on here, then you will have uh, you will available to edit all of uh, all of topic one until topic fourteen sixteen. Okay. Just edit if you want to edit this part. Just click it edit here. Okay. Edit section. Okay maybe you this one is default section and general okay but if you doesn't you want to add uh, you want to put another name just maybe welcome just put a welcome there welcome something depends on you okay maybe you want to say that this um uh oh maybe you want to copy paste it for example here i put it Okay, here, okay. Okay, for example, maybe you have right, right up, okay. Okay, this is for example, welcome to uh, here. Yeah, I just put for example, yeah. Just copy it. Oh, sorry. Maybe this is announcement again. Just put it and paste it. All right. I just put it. Please use this space to review lecture notes, additional information, and report submission. Maybe you want to add it. Um, this course will be conducted uh, in fully online. Okay, maybe you want to mention like that, just to make sure that students are aware, okay, this is fully online, maybe you want to add on, um, if you have any uh, questions or anything, you might want to refer, um, you might want to uh, update, of all the updated will be uh, uploaded in ELIP or any announcement will be uploaded in ELIP. Maybe you want to add that kind of description so the students are aware that they need to check out your ELIP. It's not every time. At least keep update with your ELIP. Okay. So 
yeah, try to add it on because there's a lot of text here. You want to extra large here, okay? Okay, T here, you want to small, medium, large, extra large here. I'll give it extra large there to say, to say welcome to there, okay? And then maybe you want to put it different of yellow. Diff it's, it depends on you. Oh, it's too... Yeah, it depends on you on how you want to make your course because this is fully online mode. You need to attract the students to keep update uh, your elite course. Okay. So there are several. So maybe you want to highlight it or underline it, make it bigger. Okay. Mm, something like that is okay. After you have done it, okay, just click save changes there. All right. If you already click save changes, all right, done with here. As you can see here, it's just one activities with no resources, with no assessments available in there. Because yeah, we doesn't have activities. It's just an announcement here without nothing. There's nothing. So again, uh, for example, in your general topic, maybe you want to upload Okay, how to upload maybe your course plan, for example, course plan. So how to edit, just click here, add an activity or resource. Okay, add an activity or resource, just click add. Okay, here there's a lot of um, tools here. But right now we want to add your course plan. Okay, resources, maybe you want to add as a file. File and add. Okay, you can put a name here, a uh, cost plan. Okay, for example, here, cost plan. Okay, and see for for two five three. Okay, files here. Okay, let me put you. Okay, files here. Okay, files is. I need to close this one. Okay, put it for example, cost plan here. Maybe you want to drag it or, okay, just click on it. Okay, this is create folder. I'm not creating a folder, I just want to add files. Okay, upload a file. Okay, choose file. It's uh, desktop of oh, desktop okay cost plan take a cost plan and open it and upload the file okay it's already there all right so that's a simple thing you can add um, your resources in elip and then save and return to course okay then you have one here as you can see here your resources here is become one so you have in this uh, your ellipse course you have one resource already provided in ellipse before this it's zero after you add on the cost then okay, it's counted actually this is automatically counted because you're using file tools it is counted as resources Okay, so you have one resource in your course plan. I hope that is clear. So this is how you want to add your um, your uh, resources or materials in Elip. Okay, so second, okay, for resources, I guess it's um, okay. But if you want to add um, something, okay, maybe this one. Okay, I want to edit this one. Okay, I would like to say, I don't want to use topic one as a, a, a title. So I just use it week one. Okay, week one, or you can put it uh, when we start, yeah. Next week, we will starting our uh, class. Maybe I put it week one, 12th October. 12th October until 
something like that. So, all right, we put it um, the title as week one, 12 October till 16 October. Okay, maybe you want to add on um, uh, something like activity. Okay, uh, or first of all, of course, the assi assignment. It's not assignment, materials. Okay, maybe you want to add um, a file again. Okay, maybe you want to add um, lecture uh, slideshow. Again, PPT, edit. Okay. Okay, maybe this one, uh, put it, let's, let's note one, for example, yeah. So, uh, earlier I, I just uh, show you how to add on by using this one, click add. But another way to add your um, documents in here, you just drag it. So this is the, um, the slideshow. Just click on it and drag it into here and drop it. So if you actually upload your files here. So they are safe and return to course. Okay, so you have two resources here. Okay, that's why it's here, it's mentioned two. All right. Okay, two here. So you have two. So how about this is how you upload your materials directly from your laptop or your computer. How about, okay, how about you want to add from your link? Okay, because you think it's too heavy. Your lecture notes is like 100 of pages more than that. And you have a lot of animation in your lecture notes. So you know the size of your lecture notes are too heavy. Okay, let's see. Okay, click at um, activity. Okay, uh, before that, before I want to create it, the link, okay, we need to go for your uh, open OneDrive. Okay, how you want to go to OneDrive? Okay, I will show you again. Go to your email. Okay, Outlook Office email. Then at the at the top left corner there, there's like nine dotted there. Click on it. Okay. And there's a OneDrive there. Okay. Click on OneDrive. Mm -hmm. And actually there's a, okay, I actually have put a, put all my materials in my one, my OneDrive here. Okay. So for examples here, okay. Uh, not too big enough, but for example, here is talk, this one is around three megabytes. It's not one gig, but for example, here how to uh, copy this link and put it in your ellip. Okay, so you want to put this slide. Okay, because this slide is too heavy. Or example is it's too much. It's too heavy load. You just click on the three dot here. Click on it and then copy link. Okay. As you can see, copy link here. One second. Okay. You need to double check again. Yeah. Because at the bottom here, anyone with the link can edit. Okay. okay. You need to be careful with whom you would share because right now i want to share with my students i don't want them to edit any of my um lecture notes so you need to change this setting okay click on it okay other settings is you unclick the allow editing so whoever has this link they couldn't edit uh, your lecture notes okay Anyone with the link couldn't edit, uh, couldn't could not edit your lecture notes, but they can view it. Okay, and then apply. But if you want to set a password, just set a password. But it's too tedious for the students always checking what is this password, doctor, may I have your password? So just it's it's uh, depends on you if you want to set it, your the password or not. Okay, then apply. Okay. 
once you have applied okay the link the new link will be um, uh, generated so you copy it okay once you have copied it okay, go back to your course here okay so add activity or source okay now you will put a url here add okay url is a link there okay add all right name a uh, put it lecture lecture note two for example maybe you want to put a name a toxic okay no it's just a name there okay external url okay you have copied it and you paste it okay so just save it all right so let your notes here okay then you click on it it will give you directly to your ppt your slideshow okay so it means that okay this um ww i mean this uh, tools actually have linked your lecture notes from one drive into this ellipse okay so it makes your ellipse not heavy load so it's easier for the students to assess it okay once you click it okay there you go you have um you have this slideshow okay okay so again that is one of it but again if you want to have another like external or extra resources from youtube okay maybe or youtube or any resources is it youtube i put you maybe hazards oops Okay, for example, you have another um, hazards here. Maybe you have uh, like, okay, uh, this is good. Practices for safety and health programs. You want to share it with your students. Okay, you might want to share the link in your students. Okay, where to share the link? Okay, from up here, maybe you can copy it. Okay, copy and go back to your course using the same um, tools there. Okay, add the activity and click on the URL okay add it I give you the example of a really simple tools okay extra resources you may want to put like that okay and then paste it okay and save okay as simple as that okay simple as that right now you already have three resources including course plan it will be four okay that's why resources become four okay and again it is reminded again um, the minimum resources you need to have in your ellipse course page is seven so you have another three to go okay but that is all for the how to add a uh, as uh, materials or resources in your ellipse okay i have show you how to link it using your onedrive or you want to link it using um, any web page you might want to use okay you you find it is okay so how about the activities okay we go for the activities okay so right now we want to add activity okay. maybe you want to say that okay activity there's a lot of activities here maybe i want to put as a forum okay forum might be good so forum and then click add maybe okay again you need to say that activity activity one okay discuss and give discuss your opinions eh, discuss opinions no give your opinions 
on something put it there okay forum type um, I usually love to have a single simple discussion so it's just um, this one one simple uh, discussion it's not like there's several topic there okay so and then click save you have an activity here so when the students click on here okay uh, maybe they want to reply it okay uh, I agree something like that done so if they want to share any resources they might want to add it or share it and then post to forum okay I agree okay maybe you want um, of course we need to double check again what is their opinion if they are wrong you need to uh, re uh, recorrect uh, correct them again so if you want to reply them, just edit it. It's not edit, reply it, reply them and keep replying on them. Okay, because we need to have a discussion with the students as well. Okay, that's how you want to add the activities. Okay, so go back again to your week one here. Okay, you have activity, you have the resources here. We going up here again. Okay. Activities we have previously it's two, but right now it is uh, previously it's one. Right now it is two because we have add another activity here. So that is the simple way if you want to do activity. Okay. So if you have um, uh, if you want to share, okay, like external tools like Padlet. Okay. For example, here I show you once here yeah. okay okay i'll show you if you're familiar with the padlet okay uh, this is for ex extra extra activities okay extra tools here okay uh, for example here yeah, i've been uh, doing a activity using this um, padlet okay i just i've already asked the students what can you do with your food scraps can you convert it into energy uh, Okay, so when you put it here, all right, how you want to share it, all right, whether you want to click share or you want to click it uh, at here, the three dotted here, okay, either you want to share or embed it, okay, share and embed, you want to copy link to a clipboard or you want to embed your blog or your website. Okay, I will show the difference between these two. If I put a copy link to clipboard here, okay, I've already copied it. Okay, before that, okay, before you want, uh, this is, I always do the same mistake sometimes, so I always remind myself. So if you want to share your Padlet or anything ex uh, external tools into uh, and embed it into your elip make sure it is public yeah make sure what you want to share is public because it is uh, automatically if you uh, use usually padlet it is usually automatically been private okay if you want to change it actually you can put it change here okay secret or if you want to keep it private okay if someone managed to get it, they should not be able to access it. It is private, okay? Or you want to have a put a password, uh, but rather not to because it's kind of tedious, but it depends on you. Uh, it's secret and or it's public, okay? It is suggested to to click uh, to use this uh, option, public. So whoever gets it, whoever gets the link, uh, they will be able to view it and to put uh, additional info there okay so we have to choose this one okay so yeah we have copy link to clipboard again and go back to your course once yeah okay go back to your course here and maybe you want to put it uh, this one maybe you want to put a, as a assignment or you want to put as activity depends on you 
okay we want to put a s activity right so just put a forum here it's not a forum sorry put an assignment here or you maybe i better put a url okay so put this one as activity okay okay give your opinions again give okay and so on so you put the external url okay and then save it all right whoever click this link it will go directly to this padlet okay and then they can continue or add on uh yeah just add on any activity yes something like that, and then post okay it's simple as that okay um i have a question here padlet external or forum internal is better accessibility for our students um i will say yes it's it's not better it is uh, a suggestion and it, i can say it's better for um for the beginner okay because it is simple okay padlet is a simple external tools that can that you can use as external tools to embed in our elip and forum yes it is simple tools that uh, that is available in ellipse hmm. if you want to have more of that you may want to check it uh, there because there are several of tools in in the elip okay but i am suggesting I give you the simple tools, okay? I'll that's why I'm suggesting you to use Padlet and also a forum as activities, all right? So this one you put it, okay? Because I show you this one copy link. How about embed? Okay, if embed is just um, uh i can put it okay i'll show you okay maybe i'll show you this one copy okay fully functional padlet that fits the dimension of your web page or blog so this is the coding so you copy it okay and you go to your course here okay and add or it's not just add here maybe you want to edit here okay this is for uh, appearance i mean more beautiful is it's the same purposes but it makes your um ellip i can say colorful so please give your opinions blah 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 okay then if you want to embed okay this is tricky part previously we just copy the link right now we want to embed it in the ellip so before embed okay you need to put this one okay this bracket okay and then paste it and then after paste it, close it. All right. After you close it, uh, let's see. Save changes here. It's direct. As you can see here, instead of going, okay, instead of clicking it, and the page will go for the new. I mean, open with the new web page. It's actually in your ellipse here. So actually, you can view it without clicking on it. Okay, maybe you uh, you comfortable to uh, to view uh, who have done your who have done the activities who have not rather than just going to the new tab. Actually, you can view it from here. Okay. Oh, it's done, done. Okay, already been done. So that's the that's the different of it. The purpose is the same using Padlet and um, I put it uh, using copy the link or embed it uh, in your ellipse. Okay, it's a different way. Which one you are comfortable? So go for it. 
All right. So let's see. Okay, that, that is one way. Okay, where either you want to embed it. This is embed. Okay. And this one is just giving the URL. Okay. Okay. Materials. Okay, resources been done. Okay, activities also have been um, uh, mentioned here. And how to put assignment here. So assignment here. Okay. The simple way is the simple tools you can choose is this uh, tools assignment as well assignment tools. Just click on it. Add. All right. Maybe you put it assignment one or project one. Okay. About about safety. Okay. Maybe you want to add a description, please submit uh, before maybe 16 October, okay, 2020, 12 p.m. Okay, you set this deadline. So here, uh, if you have uh, the questions, you may want to put it uh, here, if not, just write your questions here. What are the questions? So this avail availability okay, allow submissions. Okay, enable and due date here. I mentioned that the due date is on 16 October. So you can set it as 16 October, 16 October 2020. And I've also mentioned at 12 p.m. So at 12 p.m. But since it's, it's uh, 12 p.m. All right. So here, submission types. Okay, um, if you want to, if you want students to um, to attach their documents, put it file submissions, because some most of our assignment basically uh, a long essay or calculation, so they need to attach attach their documents. So put a file submissions here. All right. So then. Click save and return to course. Okay. Once return to course, you can see that. Okay. Assignment one safety. Okay. If okay, for students when they uh, click this one, okay, they will they they have a link there, so they need to upload. So here you may view your submissions. Okay. Right now it's zero, so there's nothing. So. It's saying that time remaining nine days, so due date here. So after twelve p.m. or twelve zero one p.m., students should not be able to submit anything in your link here. Okay, so that's all for the assignment. Okay, it's it's really simple. Okay, how to add on assignment. All right. So as you can see here, okay, assessments before this it's zero. Right now it's one because we have a uh, assignment here. Okay, one assignment here. So it is easy and simple to add on the assignment. All right, I'll give you just uh, the example, uh, the example, uh, simple examples tool which is available in Elite. All right, so. What else? Um, I guess. I guess that is all I've been. Um, I've been cover for. Uh, for the resources, activities, and assessments. Okay, right now, as you can see, there there are no stars. Okay, because there's no response from students. Okay, yeah. For one thing, okay, just additional info. Sometimes you want to uh, uh, put. Maybe this one is um, test one, enter. All right. Let me, okay, test one, enter. So uh, maybe you want to say that uh, you want to put your test one earlier because you, who knows, maybe on that time is the, the line is not good. Okay, you want to prepare it earlier. 
Okay, test one, question one, or blah, blah, blah. Okay, something like that. So, but you don't want to reveal it yet to the students. Okay, you want to keep it until the test one is, I mean, when, if you want to, to conduct test one next week, you want to reveal this test on next week, but not now. You may hide this test. Okay, how to hide it? First of all, click edit here. Okay, hide topic. Okay, you, as you can see, it's not, it's still there, but for students, they couldn't see it. How you know it's already been hide or not? Okay, the difference is this one. Okay, topic three is more darker, blue darker. Okay, the test one is like a little, a little, bit, a little bit light there. So it's actually been hidden. So the student would not be able to view your test yet. Okay. Until the come uh, until the time comes, okay, you may want to unhide it again. So if you want to unhide it, okay, edit it and click it, show topic. Okay. And it's there. Yeah, the students will be able to view your test. Okay. So that's a simple tips if you want to uh, prepare all of your materials. It's not just tasks. Maybe you want to uh, hide all of your uh, materials for second, third week, fourth week, fifth weeks of your lecture notes. You want you don't want to reveal it yet. Just hide it until next week. Uh, I mean, not next week. Until the second week, and then you unhide it again. And make it available um, where, where the students could view your resources or anything that you have put in your elip. Okay, but Sunday you want uh, this this topic is will not be used at all. Okay, for as how to delete the topic, for example, you want to delete topic three. Maybe topic three is about something is not used for this semester. Just click edit and delete topic. Okay, so delete topic. Uh, and all the activities in co contains just delete it so there will be no topic three oh sorry because this automatically i put it here as sh delete okay okay i don't want to use this delete okay so i just edit it and delete it okay delete all right, so there's no delete topic in your ELIP. But if you want to add it, like, oh, I need to add another topic. It's not enough what have been listed here. So maybe you want to add it by clicking edit and, oh, sorry, it's not this one. Click this one at the end of your uh, topic here, the bottom here. Just click plus, okay? Then you have uh, add another topic, okay? Maybe, yeah, sometimes we didn't know how much topic or you have um, uh, put it a lot of topic or subtopics. I'm not so sure about it. But yes, that's how you want to add another topic, okay? So hopefully, yeah, it's already 11 42 um is there any question is there any questions uh, regarding on this ellipse you may ask in the chat or you may want to speak uh, just unmute yourself just unmute yourself and then yeah okay if there is no questions maybe i can i will stop the seminar here and for those who who didn't have a chance to have a QR code to scan your QR code, uh, put it here. Okay. For those who didn't have a chance to to scan your QR code, please scan your attendance here. If you have any 
any questions regarding on elip feel free to contact me and you uh, you also can contact your representative of your e-learning okay each each department have their own representative um, for so hopefully uh, but it's okay you can contact me directly okay so i guess that's all thank you again for attending this webinar um, if you have any question again please contact to me and we we will see you guys uh, maybe later or next semester okay all the best for new coming semester with fully online and thank you Thank you, Dr. Hamiza. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.